Have you ever heard of the diverging diamond interchange? You know, the one where traffic crosses over to the opposite side. Did you hear that it solves traffic? Did you hear that it causes accidents? Maybe it's dangerous. Ooh, I don't know. Today, we're going to be exploring the diverging diamond interchange in Cities Skylines 2. We're going to explore where you might want to build one, why you might want to build one, and how you can upgrade an existing interchange to handle extra traffic. Everyone, thanks for being here. I'm Yumble. Let's talk about the diverging diamond. Before we can really begin discussing the diverging diamond, I think a fantastic place to start is with its predecessor, the diamond interchange. This is your basic bread and butter, get vehicles on and off of the freeway interchange, and really everyone should know how to build this without using any sort of ploppable assets or mods or anything like that in City Skylines. Welcome to Flavortown, y'all. This is my interchange test map in City Skylines 2. Very exciting stuff. I love, I love doing stuff here. So the first move is really to show the on-ramps and the off-ramps, and it's the same thing four times. I'm just gonna start, uh, we've got this overpass already existing here, crossing the freeway, it happens to go over. Doesn't matter, it can go under as well. It happens to be 7.5 meters high, as that is the sort of the optimal height to allow traffic to pass underneath it without it being too low. I also don't need it to be too high. Your, your numbers may vary, it doesn't really matter. But we're gonna go back to ground here. So we're gonna go back to zero meters and let's do each ramp about 152 meters long. Great, I'm gonna do that on all sides. You may notice I used two lane, one way, regular small road for that. We're gonna convert that to two lane, one way highway. We in the business call that a mistake, so I'm going to remedy that right now. You'll also notice that the roads are not going the correct directions all around. So with traffic driving on the right-hand side, our off-ramp is going to go that way, following the flow of traffic. Uh, our on-ramp to the freeway is going to mimic that going the same way. So on the opposite side, it'll be the same there, and then coming down just like that. So this is highway. The crossing road is not the freeway road. It's not the, the highway designation there. It's under the medium road. I'm using a four lane road there. And that happens to have a span from one edge to the other edge. Let's see. From one lane to the other lane there, it's 112 meters if you're curious how wide this bridge is if you're following along. This video is really also about road tricks and how to connect roads in, in ways that work in City Skylines 2. And even if you don't make it to the part about the diverging diamond, take this with you. This is the biggest takeaway. You will get so much mileage off of this next move. When connecting these ramps to the, to the main road, there's all kinds of ways to do it, and most of them are terrible. So let me show you the new tools in City Skylines 2. Is, has really lent itself to, to some special ways to connect roads. I'm going to expand the roads to three lanes. And these are going to be our our exit ramps, or excuse me, our, our merge lanes. Merge lanes and splits, that's what these are. So we're going to go right to three lanes so we can snap to this properly. I'm going to take the one lane, one way highway, and we're going to use the complex curve tool. I'm just going to look at about how far apart these are, 42 meters. Sure, great. I'm going to ignore the 42 meters and I'm just going to do, I'm going to eyeball this. Let's say 60 meters. So once again, we're using the complex curve tool. I'm picking one of the lanes and snapping to it. And I'm just going to go 60 meters there. And we're just going to curve this in another 60 meters approximately. 64, why not? And I'm going all the way to the outer lane. Click there. And then the complex. We're going to do 60 more meters. Maybe we'll even do more. Let's do, let's do 70 approximately. There we go. That is how I use the complex curve tool to make decent merges and splits in City Skylines 2. You will get so much use out of that. Even if you don't ever diverge your diamonds and whatever, do that to connect your highways because it looks so beautiful. And then of course using lane math we can reduce that down to the to the two lanes there. And I'm going to do that sort of thing on all sides. One other thing I'll wind up doing, just so you can see, is I'm going to reduce the length of this merge lane because we probably only need, I don't know how far, who cares? Like around 100 meters. So I'm going to cut that there, reduce this to two lanes on both sides, 
delete that connecting road. Yeah, I'm going to do that same thing on all sides to make it look pretty. Just like that, we've achieved fully functional diamond interchange status. As I mentioned earlier, this is more of a rural interchange or a lower capacity interchange, but it's still your bread and butter, get cars on and off the highway type of intersection. For this amount of traffic, I think it's going to hold up just fine. So for this example, I'm not going to have enough traffic to really blow it up to, to show you why you need a diverging diamond, but I will explain the reasoning behind the diverging diamond. Also, take note of these, uh, these connections here, the splits and merges and how smooth things can be if you use the right tool in City Skylines. Uh, I think the, in the first game in City Skylines 1, I used to do something a bit more <laughs> uh, awful. It was the best thing we had at the time, but I would just kind of send it off straight there and then blast it and then just blast this road into the side here. And you can see how that would make kind of an awful angle. And it does, and then you'd use node controller to try to fix it and stuff like that. The nodes are so flexible in this game that using that complex curve tool and making a proper merge and a proper split is so easy and so pretty. I'm, I am ecstatic about this type of thing. Here's a quick and easy way to add capacity to your diamond without diverging it. We still have not diverged this thing yet. Can you believe it? But we're about to, don't worry. It's, it's coming, just hold on to your hats. You can see I've added asymmetrical roads, a 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3 asymmetrical road pointed at the intersections. In the center here, all you got to do is double click with the straight road tool and it'll add a pillar right in the middle. You may have to turn snapping off to do it right, but if you double click using the straight road tool, turn off some snapping, click click, and then you can add 5 lane asymmetrical road. Point that at either end by dragging with the replace tool just like that. I even did it on these ends here. Sometimes you have to turn off snap to zoning cell length so it stays centered, but that adds an extra turn pocket here on the far left. I still don't have a ton of control over turn lanes. Probably going to need some mods to do this one day, but you can see that there's three lanes coming in now, one dedicated right turn into a dedicated left turn and a shared left and straight there. You can see this bus just collided with this semi. Really, really good. Very cool. Uh, yeah, that's one way to add a little bit of capacity, but what if we want to add a ton of capacity? Let's say you've identified that the majority of traffic is either turning right or left onto the freeway and is not interested in going all the way across. Let's diverge this diamond. I'm going to delete the center overpass. And in this case, to diverge means to put the roads on the opposite side. So we're going to bring traffic from the right lane into the left lane. I've turned on the, uh, or I'm about, about to turn on the parallel road, the toggle parallel mode, and I'm going to have it one wide. What is that one? I don't know. Is it one meter? Is it one? I have no idea what it is, but using, uh, this works with the, with the medium roads. That number one may have to be something different on the large roads. I haven't really cracked the code, but if you're using a medium road, you can snap to the edge of this with all the snapping options on parallel on one. We're going to go all the way across, so this is centered on both of those networks coming in, centered on both of these ramps coming up the way. Uh, you'll notice that the roads are currently, topographically, I virtually identical to the diamond we just had. We're going to have to turn them around. The way to do this is to use this tool here, the replace tool, but you'll notice the roads tend to want to disappear if we do that. So don't do that yet. We just have to add a pillar. I think on either side, I don't think it matters. We'll just add a pillar. I'll even turn off parallel because we don't need all that mess. I think this pillar will disappear if I add one here. I would love to be able to add both, but hey, take what you can get. So now I'm going to flip this road backwards. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to add a pillar again. Doesn't really matter what side you add it on. I, I don't fully understand the why. I'm just telling you the what. You can use these techniques to make your diamonds diverge. I also want to nudge these closer together so they almost will look like they're a single network by the time I'm done. So the best way to do that might be to take out our two-lane one-way road, or maybe even the three-lane one-way road, depending on how wild you want to get. I'll keep it low because we don't need that much capacity here, but two-lane one-way road, I'm going to turn off... Goodness, snap to existing geometry, I think. Nope, I'm going to turn off snap to zoning cell length, and I'm going to re-add a pillar 
The adding of the pillar is crucial, otherwise you'll lose all your work thus far, so make sure you do that. And I'm just going to go around and sort of nudge these towards the center. I'm going to go around and nudge over and over until the job is done. You can see I've turned off the snap to zoning cell length. That's one nudge, two nudges. I'll have to keep adding a pillar every time I want to do this because that's just how the game works right now. Is it meant to drive you insane? I can't speak to that. Is it slowly driving me insane? Also, no comment. I'm just going to keep doing this until they're as close together as possible. That is clean as a whistle. I've nudged each of these one by one. I want to say painstakingly, but really it's not that bad. But I nudged them as close together as they will go. There's virtually no gap in between the two networks, and they're not but they're also not clipping through each other or anything, so it's very clean in appearance. I'm very, very happy with that result. It almost looks like a singular overpass, which is really the goal, as that is how most of these look in real life. They tend to be a diamond that is converted into a, into a diverging diamond by moving traffic to the opposite side of the road. So for functionality's sake, the, really the cherry on top of the whole thing is to remove, the no, uh, remove straight aheads from these as you're you're not allowed to go straight ahead because these are usually islands in real life all of these voids here are generally islands to stop traffic from from driving a certain way it, as you can see here an island in this position would really deter you from from making the mistake of turning right on this so there's something right in the way much like a roundabout a reverse roundabout in a sense there's just an obstacle there. So imagine that, that's how it works in the real world. But the beauty here is traffic can make that same right-hand turn from the diamonds, so that hasn't changed. But you also have the option to go straight ahead. And if most of your traffic is interfacing with the freeway, making this left here, rather than going straight across, you've removed a whole lot of conflict from the design. The only places that, stri that straight through traffic conflicts is at the ends, which are both the same there. The straight through traffic has to conflict directly with the opposing straight through traffic, but the straight through traffic does not conflict with the right turning traffic onto the freeway, nor does it conflict with the left turning traffic onto the freeway. So I think that is a stellar way to pull this off cleanly and simply. And the for additional beauty points, you can start with a diamond and then work your way up to this or if you never need this, then great, more power to you. Keep it as a diamond. Least amount of force necessary is something I'm really, I really want to impress on people. You don't need a stack interchange everywhere. You don't need to overbuild your infrastructure. It leads to really unrealistic looking places. So this kind of keeps it, keeps everything, uh, the diamond at least keeps everything smaller and more space efficient and more realistic. So yeah, take all this under advisement. Of course, the lane math can always be switched up on this design as well. You can certainly go through and add a three plus two or a four plus three or whatever asymmetrical road you want on these. The center uh, networks here could be three lanes wide or four lanes wide. The on-ramps could, could change as well. Until I have direct lane control though, until I can really use lane connectors or directly control lane arrows, this is about as good as anything. Maybe you'd want to increase the number of lanes, but for this application here, this, this works totally fine. A bit of node controller would help a lot. As you can see, the cars tend to get hung up on each other. Like, let's see if, if this traffic comes straight through here. The vehicles may get a little hung up on one another. You can see it there. So just because the lanes are slightly too close, the vehicles detect one another. So there's room for improvement, but the way that I built this is a pretty clean and compact way to do it, so I endorse it. But I also want to really hear what you think about this design and how you think it works in the real world. If you have safety concerns or you've heard horror stories about these things, I want you to cite your sources. You can say it's unintuitive, but as I described earlier, the road really only allows you to go one direction. For you to go straight into oncoming traffic, in the real world, you would have to bump over this island here or go way out of your way when making this left turn. You'd have to make a really harsh right so user experience-wise, and the way inter it interfaces with humans, 
it seems to work wonders from what I've seen uh, statistically in terms of avoiding collisions or making collisions less serious at the very least compared to whatever intersection or interchange this design might replace. That's all I've got for today. Everyone, thanks for hanging out and talking Diverging Diamonds with me. Feel free to come by for a stream someday. I stream on Twitch. Feel free to join the Discord. Of course, subscribe here if you want to hear more cool stuff about roads and interchanges and talk about city skylines too, but that's all I've got. Thanks for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.